Hello, today I'm going to take a look at this Yarnold PLC question that came from the ACCN2 um, paper, so under the old specification, but from June 2019, so the last sitting um, of that specification. So we know that company accounts are coming up in sections B and C, so I thought it would be a useful um, exercise. So this one is fairly straightforward. Um, the accountant has begun preparing the financial statements, but has been taken ill. So she's asked us to carry on with the income statement, which she's already started, um, and complete the statement of changes in equity. So we've been given a whole load of balances that remain um, in the books of account after she's completed the trading section. So if we look at the second page of this question, let's get that up. We can see there that she's already had a go um, at completing the income statement. So for eight marks, we've got to finish that. So she's got down as far as gross profit. Now, if we remember, it's a, a company income statement, so we're looking for more types of profit than we would be with a sole trader. We're looking for um, our normal expenses to come up with the uh, the profit from operations. Then we'll be looking for the finance costs. So that'll be any interest paid on loans or debentures. Um, and then we'll be looking for tax, the, uh, the liability that we're estimating for the financial year to get to the profit for the year after tax. So let's have a look then at what we've got here. We've got um, pretty much all the balances um, for the statement of changes in equity, the rest of the income statement, and also the statement of financial position. But we're not asked to do a statement of financial position. So some of these will be surplus to requirements. So one word of advice, don't be tempted because they give you a load of numbers to make sure you use every single one. One of the things the, the examiner is testing is that you understand you know, what goes where and that you can discriminate between things that belong in the income statement, things that belong in the statement of changes in equity, and things that will belong on the statement of financial position. Okay, so we'll come back to this list of balances in a minute. Let's just look at the additional information, things that haven't been recorded um, in the books of accounts. So depreciation is charged at the rate of 25% per annum using the reducing balance method on all non-current assets owned at the 30th of April 2019. So depreciation hasn't yet been calculated. Um, it tells us, I think, up here that um, she's prepared the income statement and made all the necessary adjustments. So oops, she's done things like the uh, the prepayments and accruals, um, but it says with the exception of calculating depreciation. So because it's reducing balance, we need to find the net book value. We've got non-current assets at cost here, 5 million. So if we add that and we take away the depreciation to date, that will tell us the net book value, which I reckon is going to be 3.6 million, 5 million minus 1.4 million. And we're doing 25% of that as depreciation. So we're actually going to end up with £900,000. And that's going to go as an expense in the income statement. Um, some other information, which we may as well look at while we're here. Um, 31st of March, the directors made a bonus issue. So if you remember, that's where they make um, free issues um, of shares to existing shareholders. Um, and that, that was on the basis of one new share for every three held. So one of the things we're going to need to work out is how many shares we've actually got at the moment. The shares are 50p each. We've got £1.2 million pounds worth. So if we divide that by 0.5 or times it by two, because if they're 50 pence shares, we can buy two for every pound. Um, then that means we've got 2.4 million shares at the moment. So if we're doing a bonus issue on the basis of one new one for every three held, convert that into a fraction in the order that you're given in the question. So one for three, we've got one there for three is going to be one over three times the existing number of shares, not the monetary amount. So we've got 2.4 million shares. So a third of 2.4 million, I reckon is 800,000 shares. And they're 50 pence shares. So that's actually going to add 400,000 to the ordinary share capital. But remember, because these are bonus shares, we're going to have to take that out of um, other reserves. So we're going to, in effect, pay for those shares by taking money out of any um, share premium revaluation reserve. And it tells us that they, the company, or the directors of the company, want to maintain the reserves in their most distributable form. So that means they want you to use the capital reserves first, so get rid of things like the share premium and a revaluation reserve, if there was one. I don't think there is, looking at this. So that's where assets have gone up in value We've created a revaluation reserve. Those are capital reserves. There's no other use for those um, as far as we're concerned. So um, it makes sense to, to get rid of those rather than eat into the retained earnings. So you only use retained earnings for bonus shares if there's no other option, because these retained earnings can be used to pay dividends, whereas share premium account can't. 
Um, the final piece of information is that on the 29th of April, they paid a dividend of two pence per share on all the shares in issue at that date. So we had 2.4 million at the start, and we've just issued another 800,000. So we've actually got 3.2 million shares. Now, this is why it's important to calculate shares in terms of numbers and um, monetary amounts. Apologies if I didn't move the, move the paper fast enough there. But yeah, 3.2 million shares, and we're paying them two pence. So by my reckoning, that's going to be £64,000. Now, we're going to need to add that to any dividends we've got up here. So if you have a look here, dividend paid 31st of December was 120000 and we've paid another 64000 down here. So if we add that to the 120000 that will go on our statement of changes in equity as a total. So remember, we don't want to be listing the dividends separately when we get to the statement of changes in equity. Right, so let's have a look then at this income statement. So as we said, she's already made a start and we've got to take off the expenses. So if we just have a look for expenses in this list, we can see there we've got marketing expenses, 415,000. And let's see what other expenses. Up here, we've got admin expenses of 565,000. So let's pop those in. Let's stick the admin expenses in here. I'm going to abbreviate that just to make it a little bit quicker. So the admin expenses on our other sheet were 565,000. So let's pop that in there. We also had the marketing expenses. We don't need to adjust these at all. Uh, marketing expenses, 415,000. And then if you remember, we calculated depreciation. Depreciation was 900,000. And we worked out that that's gonna be included as an expense. So we've got depreciation of 900,000. So if we add those three up, we're going to get 1,880,000 pounds, which is going to come off of our gross profit to give us our profit from operation. So that's the second profit in a company income statement. So 2 million and 40,000 gross profit there minus the 1 million 880,000 is going to leave us with 160,000 pounds. And then we've got to work out whether there's any finance costs. So finance costs, if you remember, are going to be loan debenture interest. Now, one thing that's worth checking here, it says that she's made all the adjustments in this case. So I'm not anticipating the need to accrue for any debenture interest. But if the debentures are outstanding throughout the whole year, and they were a million pounds worth, if we times that by 6%, that is 60,000 pounds. So it's just worth checking that you've got the right amount in there. So in this case, they've paid all the debenture interest, but very often you will need to accrue for it. So just be prepared for that. So let's take that off. So that's gonna give us the profit for the year before tax. I think once we get to this bit, we're kind of home and dry, aren't we? So that's gonna leave us 100,000 pounds there. Then we're gonna, take the tax off. This is the, the figure that we think is going to be due based on our profits for the year, an estimate. So provision for corporation tax there, £20,000. And that works like an accrual. We pop it in here. It won't have been paid yet. So it will likely feature on the, uh, the statement of financial position as a liability. Um, and then that's going to give us the profit for the year. So I didn't write tax there, but the profit for the year after tax, which is £80,000 pounds okay so that's the first part done eight marks in the bag now we're going to need to remember that figure because that figure is going to go on to our statement of changes in equity which is the next task now this one is worth 13 marks now they've been quite kind and they've given us the the titles here so each one of these represents one of the um, balances on the statement of financial position so we're explaining what we had in that start in terms of equity the shareholders funds and then we're going to explain the movements down here. And then at the bottom, we'll have the, um, the balance carried forward at the end of the year. So let's start with what we had at the beginning of the year. So we're looking for things like the share capital. Now, we already saw that ordinary shares. We had £1.2 million pounds worth. So because their year ends the 30th of April, the opening balance is going to be at the 1st of May 2018. So it was at the start of the year. We had £1,200,000 pounds worth of share capital. If we have a look here, we had a share premium, £300,000. So let's pop that in as well. 
and then the retained earnings. So these are all the um, profits that haven't yet been paid out as dividends. 676590. So 676590 in there. So that's the opening balances. So we're probably going to get one mark for, for completing that for that row. Then we need to explain what's happened. So we've got the issue of shares. Um, if you had a revaluation that had happened during the year, I'd put that in first because you can use a revaluation reserve to pay for, for bonus shares. Now, if you remember back here, we issued an extra 800,000 shares at 50p each, 400,000 pounds worth. Now, it's the monetary amounts that we want in here, not the number of shares. So 400,000 pounds has gone into the issued share capital. Now, if that had been a rights issue, those shares would have been paid for and we would be debiting the bank account, the bank would have gone up by the same amount. But in this case, they haven't been paid for because they were bonus issues. So we're going to take 300,000, the maximum amount out of our share premium to wipe that out. So there's no share premium carried forward. Um, that doesn't quite do it though. So we are going to have to dip in to the retained earnings. If you remember, I said we should try and avoid using those where possible because the retained earnings is the column that you can pay dividends from, whereas the share premium in the issued share capital Obviously, you can't. So the next bit we need to put in is profit for the year. So this is the figure that came off of the income statement we did a minute ago. So let's just have a look there. So that was £80,000 profit for the year Oops, after tax. So let's pop that in. That's going to go into the retained earnings column. And then we've got dividends paid. And what we need to be using there is the total figure. So if you remember, we had the um where's the dividends up here 120,000 pounds paid on the 31st of December and then we have the extra 64,000 that we worked out down here as a result of note three so the total amount dividends paid is 100 and does that work out 184,000 isn't it 184,000 okay and then the very last stage with this is to work out what's happened what the final balance is at the 30th of April 2019. So we've now got 1.6 million pounds worth of share capital. We've got nothing left in share premium because we used it to pay for these um, bonus shares that were given to the shareholders for free. And then if we total up what's happened here, we've got um, 100,000 coming out for the issue of shares. We've got 80,000 going in for the profit for the year and 184,000 pounds in dividends paid. So at the end, we've got 472,590. And these two figures will go on to the statement of um, financial position. They'll be shown in the uh, in the equity section, and that will balance with the net assets of the business. So hopefully that's given you an idea of how to deal with bonus issues. It's given you a little recap of the, um, the company income statement, um, calculation of dividends um, and all of that. So I'll do another question involving a rights issue, um, one from an even older paper called Werewolf, so watch out for that one. Um, and if you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and watch out for more in the coming few days, link to paper one. Um, once we've got that out of the way, I shall start uh, working on some materials, some more materials for, for the paper two exam coming up on the 16th of June. Thanks very much for watching.